High jump where Prodsenko has had two failures at 2.25. The uh, Ukrainian came in at 2.16, popped over that first time. 2.21 was no problem, but 2.25 proving a bit of an obstacle. Well, not that time. That was lovely. Very smooth. Didn't waste any energy, did he? He is very experienced. He knows how to... Uh, use what is needed and no more and when the pressure was on he goes clear doesn't touch the bar lovely clearance he will fight on can tell that uh, athletes have gone clear already at this height first time akimenko love it they're dasakau <laughs> Ivanyuk, third attempt for him, exactly the same card as Protsenko, and he goes clear, the Russian. They're able to raise their game, if you'll forgive the pun, when the uh, screw is really being tightened. And uh, Ivanyuk, the bronze medalist at the last World Championships, second in the Russian Championships with 231. Having a few problems, given a few problems at 225, but able to smile, and he can now read. The brilliantly named Django Lovett in the men's high jump, the Canadian, no Derek Druin who uh, has served Canadian high jumping so well and finally gave way to injuries this year and Django with his last jump at the Canadian trials achieved the Olympic qualifier 233, oh well, that's very nice indeed. I think his dad named him after a jazz guitarist. Some, Tim would know who it is, Django, somebody who's uh, apparently a very famous jazz guitarist. Anyway, uh, he is in great form at just the right time. Made the Olympic team for the first time. And uh, nice clearance at 2.29. Kimenko, all smiles as well. The men's high jump, uh, we've seen there was a great competition this week in uh, Hungary in the, that Tim was talking about, 237, uh, Tim talked about that earlier on. The overall standard has been uh, very good on Slevin. The phenomenal Maxim Nidesegal, second attempt, 229, just to keep him honest. And uh, when you've jumped 237 indoors and outdoors, oh no! Well, a bit of pressure now for the Belarus. I was about to say, you know, when you've got that confidence of in top form, I'm, I'm hitting the heights every week. And then all of a sudden, here on the biggest stage, or one of the biggest stages before we get to the Olympics, it fails. Well, so Petsenko, his third attempt. Now, it might be less of a surprise were he not to get over this, but certainly little Sakao is a man in form. Petsenko, no, never looked near. So he's out, he's gone. Ivanyuk passed at this height, 229. Not sure if he's got some sort of problem. Stark out, Tamberi out, Fazinotti, the two Italians. Shame to see Tamberi not going higher than 221 here tonight. The, the scene of his one of his greatest triumphs and indeed greatest tragedies, wasn't it? It was here where he this men's high jump now. Django Lovett, third attempt at 232. Now, Lovett, deeply focused. First time clearance is 216, 221, 225, 229. But has he met his match here? Oh, that was a superb effort, too, from the Canadian. Commonwealth bronze medalist three years ago. His lifetime best, 233, was only. Uh, 10 days or so ago in Montreal. So it was asking a lot. Formerly a soccer player. Says his favorite athlete is Javier Sotomayor. 
There's a degree of logic to that when the uh, Cuban still holds the world record from that 245 jump back in 1993. But Lovett there goes out. It's been a great comp from him. He has uh, guaranteed himself second place. Nadasakau had two attempts at 229 and then saved one for 232, which he, he failed. I don't know if you mentioned Tim, but uh, Ivanyuk did retire after uh, those uh, early jumps, which is uh, a real pity. And, uh, you can then go, he's all smiles, isn't he? But uh, Claude himself, keeping himself involved, it's a great competition for him tonight, but not, uh, you know, what, not quite the high jump we were expecting, is it? We were hoping we might get something special. Not yet. Well, that meeting record of 240 looks some distance away. That was set by Bondarenko seven years ago. Can tell you that uh, Tamberi had a, a difficult night. Cleared 221 at the second time of asking, and then three failures at 225. Brandon Stark. Cleared 221 first time, then three failures at 225. Difficult for some of these fellas. Yeah, that, uh, and uh, jazz guitar and uh, aficionados have uh, confirmed Django Reinhardt is who he was uh, named after. But tell you what, he's um, making a name for himself here, isn't he? As I said, they weren't watching earlier, 233 at the Canadian trials, the third attempt. He had to get over it to make the Olympic team, and he did it. So he's obviously somebody who can produce the jump when he needs to at the right time. And he's in the position here where he could grab hold of his Diamond League high jump. Now, that's a shame. So 232 at the moment, proving a, a bit too far, which, as I said earlier, was a little bit disappointing tonight because we were hoping with the likes of Tamberi and Ivanyuk, Nedesikau, Menko is still involved that we might see them in that certainly up into the mid 230s but nobody yet Akimenko then oh beautiful beautiful sorry Tim I'm yes we're it is a jump off situation is. we're in and uh, love it had his three failures at 232 but his card was identical to Akimenko's Perfect up to the two, two, up to and including 229, and then three failures at 232. So Lovett went first, failed his attempt. Akimenko in what is a sudden death situation. Goes yeah, clear. Penalties in the high jump. And um, yes, my uh, my apologies. I thought that was a th we hadn't seen the third attempt of uh, Lovett, but um, they jumped straight to the jump off, as it were, because the bar is still at the same height, 232. Had he not gone clear there, which he yeah, thankfully did, we would have dropped the bar again, but that is fourth attempt, essentially, Tim. He clears 232. Sure, um, said, uh, all of the guys would have walked off tonight thinking, uh, yeah, great competition, but plenty of smiles. Good experience as well for Lovett. You know, you don't see him too often in the Diamond League, 